How's everyone, Grant here. Welcome back to the channel. And this is less than 24 hours into the, using the brand new ZTE Blade 10. And so ZTE is saying you're gonna get a pretty good camera experience on this $179 device. And so this is my first chance at actually testing out these cameras. So this is a front-facing camera at 1080p, which is its max resolution. And so let's go ahead and take a spin around here so you can see how the camera handles into the changing light. And so this is close to sunset, so this is actually almost a low light situation. So let's see how it does here for a $179 phone. So let's go ahead on a quick photo walk here, take some photos and see what these cameras can do. So I'm just catching the last bits of sunset here. You can see the night sky, and that last bit of sunlight. Really looks really nice, kind of a violet orangish color. And so you're gonna hear some street noise because I'm on the street. But that might be a decent test of the microphones here. Zoom in a little bit, get the silhouette of that tree. So that's almost two times zoom. Still looks fairly decent for how dark it is. Hey everyone, so here's some video from the front facing camera. Now this is outdoors in some pretty good lighting conditions. And earlier today I took a visit to the Apple Mothership or Apple Park over in Cupertino, California. And I decided to take a few photos and video clips while I was there with the Blade 10. So let's go ahead and check those photos and videos out. I'll probably also throw in some additional photos and a proper video test, but let's check out how those videos and photos turned out.
so here is a quick camera test in the park with the ZTE Blade 10. So it can shoot up to 1080p, 30 frames per second here, and there is no stabilization, hardware or software, but you can stabilize the footage and post using the stabilize feature in Google Photos, and I can show you how that works later. This also has autofocus and a focus lock as well if you wanna lock your focus. So let's go over here to the cell tower and test the zoom. It's only got a four times digital zoom, and honestly, it's pretty grainy. So I wouldn't really rely on any kind of a zoom here on this particular phone, but for actual regular video footage, not too bad for a $179 device. So let's test the autofocus here on the post. And not too bad, locked in. Refocuses away. And let's see. And refocus. And one more time. There we go. So let's go ahead and test stabilization. And this is definitely gonna be very shaky since there is no stabilization. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stabilize this in post using Google Photos stabilize feature. And I'll show you the differences side by side here. So here's a quick footage in the park. Let's take a look at some of the changing leaves before we get out of here. Hey everyone, so those are all the photos and videos that I have from the ZTE Blade 10. What do you think about the quality coming out of this $179 phone? So for me personally, I thought the photos looked really nice in both good and low light. There's a lot of sharpness. If anything, the colors were a little bit more muted. But that's easily correctable in post using Google Photos or any of your favorite photo editing software. And I really thought it outperformed its price point here. As far as video, video also came out very, looking pretty good in both good and low light. It didn't look quite as good as the still photo quality, but certainly more than usable and definitely more than good enough for something around this price point. What is impressive is that both photos and videos look pretty good and are definitely more than usable even in low light. So low light performance on this was a little bit of a surprise for me and definitely outperforming something in this price category. So one thing it's missing is slow motion video. So if you like using slow motion, it does not have that built in, but it does have other fun camera features like it's mono color mode and there is portrait mode on the rear, not necessarily on the front. And as you can see here, there is no stabilization on the front or rear facing cameras, but I do suggest you use a stabilized feature in something like Google Photos to help stabilize that in post and you can get some pretty good stable video from either the front or the rear facing camera. So that's what I think about the photos and videos here. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Any other questions or comments, drop a comment as well. And as always, thanks for watching.